if you're being real and you're in love with a guy and he's not marrying you, there's tears inside there. My dream is that we can be married and, you know, and it's not happening. If you were just going to see us as like we're dating or something, or what am I, your companion and what, you'd have more money than me, so I'm with you if that's the case, or you're just, you know, can't find somebody who really loves you. Because in our culture, there is what other people think. And I do care about what other people think. That's why I look at lists and I try to do the can and, we, you know, we have resumes. It's important. And for a woman, her resume, for many women, is I have a man by my side and he is there. It's just feeling so proud and proud of him, but also proud that you have this life. And people go, well, are you getting married? Are you not getting married? And, and a man will always come back to, what do we care about other people? And you go, well, that's true. I mean, that's it. But there is a part of me that really, really likes it for everybody to know that I have a man who loves me so much he wants to marry me. And that and you made your point and he has to hear it. You're not arguing, you're just making your point and let it sit down and bring it back again. And each time you bring it back, if you're really true to yourself, there'll be some tears. And part of me just feels like giving up and uh, my heart just can't, my dream can't come true. And, and, and I would love that. See, there's beautiful feminine feeling that comes up if you let it come up. And so tears sometimes are very helpful and motivating and changing. Just don't use it all the time. That's your secret power as women, just to know that. But if it's used too much, it has no power. Did that come across okay, Michelle? Did that come across okay? Yeah, I did. And what I love about this is I think what you're really doing, John, with your work and what you teach is helping to create a win-win scenario where both people get to get needs met and get to feel valued and get to feel love and where we can really communicate and, and form connections. And one of the things I love about relationships and this work studying in work of uh in the area of relationships is there's always so many layers to this you know like like i was saying we've had so many conversations and yet there's so many nuances and details and the things we talked about today a lot of new things a lot of new things you know having conversations with you brings out more michelle and this little piece you might do is a little short one is how to get a man to uh share his feelings now in that subject what we have is a whole group of women going, I just want a man to share his feelings. Yes. Oh, he doesn't open up. All of those women, in my experience, for 50 years doing this, those women are not very good at opening up. If a woman opens up and a man can feel successful in providing support for her, her need for him to open up becomes much less. Because at a deeper level, Women want a man to open up because they're insecure. They're afraid. What's he thinking? Does he love me? Does he care? Is it, where's the relationship? Is something upsetting him about me? I want to know what that is. And so something could be upsetting him about you. He's a little bummed or irritated. You're, you're going to go in and go, well, what is it you're feeling? And if a man has wisdom, he's not going to tell you because whatever he says, he knows it's just going to disappear in the wind in 10 minutes. It's no big deal. It's not a big deal. Just give me some space. I'll handle it, minimize it, and come back to loving. Men can do that. We do it by saying it's no big deal. If we start talking about something and say, well, I didn't really like the way you said that the other day. Well, why didn't you like it? You will immediately go into Terry. Well, why didn't you like it? I didn't mean this. You shouldn't have felt that. And, don't you? And, and suddenly he knows we're going to be in a big argument. So why does he open up? Because he doesn't need to. See, he doesn't, he can be bothered, bothered about something and he can just forget it. He can rationalize it. Well, nobody's perfect. She's having a bad day. She's not that way all the time. I love her. Sex was great. Everything's fine. Okay. So men, men have their way of processing things. It's called analysis. It's not sharing what's inside. Now, sometimes we need to share what's inside. There's no doubt about it. And that's why sometimes men need that. But that's not their primary thing. The primary thing is to open their heart by analyzing a situation, recognizing I'm accountable, I'm making a big deal about this, I have unrealistic expectations. And this is a man who has any sort of self-esteem and confidence can do this. A man who does it, he's gonna be upset and he, you don't have to ask him to open up, he's already gonna tell you what he's mad about, he's gonna be upset. And every time he talks when he's upset, he will become more upset. Once he's put his word out there, he now has to defend it. If he doesn't have to defend it, he can process it and let it go. We have this whole idea that men misbehave and men are not good because they're not in touch with their feelings. 
and they didn't cry enough as children. Okay, now, let's just put this in its category. Yes, if you shame a little boy when he cries, it's going to have a, a negative effect on him, without a doubt. It's a minor effect, a minor effect. The reason men who can't feel, who are dysfunctional, if I, I've taught in San Quentin prison, these guys do not know what they're feeling at all. They cannot get, they can act on anger. They can act on fear. They have fight or flight reaction, but they don't know what they're feeling inside and their hearts are not open. They don't feel compassion or empathy. That's a great extent. Criminal behavior comes from the inability to feel empathy. And everybody in psychology and they're, oh, poor boys, they didn't get to cry. And that's why they're, they're so shut down and can't feel empathy. No, that's not the reason. The reason is their mother was unhappy and their father was unhappy. They were not loving parents to each other. What a child needs is to feel his mother's love. How can a mother be loving when she's mad at her father, at his father? You hate my father. How can I feel loved by you? So it, it's a part of him is canceled out. It's when women don't love men and men don't love women, then children have all this conflict inside of them. It's too painful. And so they shut down and they can't feel. It's not that somebody didn't there. So it is, oh, what are you feeling? What are you feeling? It's basically they're, they're deficient in love. They're deficient in security. They're deficient in encouragement. All the qualities of love are completely deficient when parents can't give that love to each other. So and, and people want to, oh, poor boy, he couldn't cry. We need to get men to t in touch with their feelings. There's no question that's important that men can connect with their feelings, particularly, particularly their feelings of love, okay? Their feelings of empathy for others. But if, if a boy doesn't have a father feeling empathy for his mother, how can he feel empathy for his mother? And if a mother is using a little boy as her source of love rather than a man, the little boy is going to shut down. It's too much pressure to be dad to husband to my mother. It's that the mother shouldn't be so needy to the child. The unhappy mother who's loving to the child is just giving the message, your father's not enough, I need your love. And that's the wrong message. That puts pressure on that boy. He can't connect with female. And so it's the dynamics of parenthood and childhood that create the problems, the dysfunctional problems in men. It's not that men could open up and express their feelings. The problem for females is why they're overly picky, dissatisfied, overwhelmed, judgmental, critical. It, not that all women are, and they are to some degree, we all are. But when it's a problem, which is dysfunctional, you can't stay married, you can't think no guy's good enough for you and whatever. It's just too much pickiness. You're not coming from a place of love, which embraces people as they are, appreciates what is available, trusts what is possible, tr whether you're feeling trust within yourself. So the problem for female is they didn't get the safety to express their feelings. That's one part of it. They also didn't get a father to support them, a mother who was happy. Uh, you know, there's so many needs that we have in childhood. If I summarize it, it's in my book, Children Are From Heaven, The Primary Needs, also another simple book I wrote, What You Feel You Can Heal, Your Basic Needs for the Child Inside. And we all have a child inside, but for a little girl or a little boy, what are their basic needs? Their basic needs, it's okay to be different. Don't compare me with other people. Don't judge me, I'm not enough. That's comparing. You love a person for who they are. First one, don't have to be like everybody else. Two, it's okay to want more. We're constantly being judged for wanting what we want. I mean, you can't have it always, but get the word to want more and not get it right away. And then if you don't get it right away, you're upset. And if you get upset, it's okay to be upset. And then a parent needs to know how to empathize with that child's upset. So. That's, that is an important need. That's a, you know, to, a boy can be upset about somebody and somebody says, okay, well, what's bothering you? And he can talk a little bit about it. He doesn't have to do therapy, but you know, you don't, it's okay to have negative feelings, you know, being judged for it. And then, then uh, it's okay to have feelings, okay to want more. It's okay to make mistakes. A huge need that we all have is forgiveness and acceptance and a punishment and judgmentalness. And uh, you're a bad child. You should suffer because of that. And it, and it also, we need boundaries, which is it's okay to be upset, but you're still going to do it. I'm the boss. Okay. Your parents have children have to have clear boundaries around them so much. And then on top of that, that's our basic, our basic needs that we can give to our own self when we grow up. But beyond that is that there's safety around me, that mother feels safe. Dad is providing. Man, husband and wife are there together. 